everyone and welcome back to my video Tomcat Stitch or channel <laughs> Tomcat Stitchery. This is a video I'm doing for my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and um, I'm clearly filming a lot of videos in a row right now and getting tongue tied. <laughs> um, I have another shirt making month tutorial for you today. Um, I am again one of the leaders for Sew My Style and we are doing button up shirts. We are doing the Sedona and the Novelista. And um, I'm doing today a tutorial on how to do a collar and collar stand insertion. I do mine without any hand sewing. You could of course definitely do hand sewing and I will show you at what point you could if you prefer. Um, typically shirts have top stitching on them so I just use that to my advantage and um, put them in pretty quickly without uh, any hand sewing. So that's what I'm going over today. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we've got some more really fun stuff coming up. Um, of course, this is a bonus video. I do these on Wednesdays every now and again and usually it's my tutorial videos that I do on Wednesdays, although you had a tutorial video yesterday. Um, I'm trying to cram a lot into May before, <laughs> before the Sew My Style reveal. Um, but on Friday this week, I'm going to be talking all about, so in two days, all about swimwear. I'm getting ready to revamp my swimwear drawer and my daughter's actually. I'm going to be making some for her too. So I'm going to be talking a lot about swimsuit patterns, um, notions, how to, you know, what to collect, where to get them, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, and if you guys actually, after that video, if you're interested in me doing anything else related to that, just let me know and we could probably figure something out now that we're entering summer. So that's what you have to look forward to Friday. Um, next Wednesday, I've got my bias tape facing for a shirt tail hem. And let's see, what else do I have going on? That's all I can think of off the top of my head. I think maybe on Tuesday next week, I've got my module three plans. Um, which actually might not just be plans because I've technically made everything for module three. It's just stuff that I've pulled out of my closet anyway. So I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, hit the subscribe button so you don't hit a thing. I've got a ton of plans in the next few months coming your way. Um, and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye. All right, so we're going to do a collar insert, a collar and collar stand into our shirt. This is not hard at all. Okay, so you should have two collar pieces and the um, one should be interfaced, the other one doesn't have to be. And then two um, stand pieces. Again, one is underfaced and one is not. So first things first, we're gonna sew our two collar pieces together, right sides together. And what I like to do, this has a, um, I'm working on the Novelista shirt by Blank Slate, Slate Patterns. This has a half inch seam allowance. Um, I think it's on the color too. It's a good thing to check. Yes. Yep. <laughs> half inch seam allowance. <laughs> um, so I'm going to sew a half inch. I'm going to do, if you can kind of see here, um, maybe I'll, well, no, right there. Okay. So here the, um, shorter curve is going to go into the collar stand. The longer curve at top is the outside of your collar. So we're going to start at the side, sew up, sew along the top edge, and sew down. And then once we have turned and top stitched, we're going to sew the bottom close just because it makes it easier to put the stand on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to sew from the side, across the top, and down the other side, right sides together. Um, and I'm going to sew with my interfaced piece up. You should always do that um, because your feed dogs will help you with any easing that needs to happen. So interfaced side up um, and I'll do that real quick. Alright, once you have those two sewn right sides together, um, you're just going to go in, clip your points. I like to, uh, you could grade. You could definitely grade your seam allowances if you wanted to, which is where you cut one shorter than the other, um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut them in half. So I'm going to cut my ends, and then I'm going to cut these half inch down to a quarter. All right, 
So now I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I have a, this is called a point turner or a um, Taylor's press, Taylor's, uh, what is it called? <laughs> it's basically a clapper on the bottom and then pressing um, on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna, as best as I can, press these seam allowances open. And then I'll put it on like so, and as best as I can without crushing the curve, try and press those open. And then I'm gonna turn it, oh, I'm caught on my thread. I'm gonna turn it right sides out and give it a good press and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it all pressed. There's the right side. Um, and your interface side is gonna be the side that faces up. So the side that the um, public can see. And then my back. And I've got a seam in my under collar because um, I ran out of fabric and had to piece that together. But that's fine. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to top stitch um, a quarter of an inch exactly the seams I just sewed. I'm gonna go up the side, across the top, back down, but then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch along this raw edge that is still open. Uh, well. Go, that's still open um, to keep that closed because it will make sewing the color stand later uh, a lot easier. You have less layers flapping around. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And again, I'm sewing with my interface side up. Everything is nice and top stitched. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, I kind of chose a busy pattern. <laughs> okay, so with our interfaced side up, we are going to sew our collar stand to the collar. So first things first, okay. Sorry, not up. Your interface side on your collar is going to be down. Okay, so I have a seam back here, um, but you can kind of feel which one's the interface side and which one's the not. Okay, so with my uninterface side up, so my interface side is down, I'm going to take my color stand, this is my interfaced color stand piece, and I'm going to take it, this can get kind of confusing. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin it so you can see. But basically, the um, shorter curve is the top. So you can kind of tell, like these little parts that go down, when it's worn, that's gonna go from the collar down to the shirt. So we're gonna put these right sides together. We're gonna match up this shorter curve to um, the bottom of the collar. And again, it's your interfaced. She doesn't have a lot of notches on this, but match your notches. And I'll show you what this looks like. So can you kind of see we've got this is, is going down at the moment, but if we were looking at the collar right way up, it's going up. Okay, so we've got the interfaced collar stand pinned to the uninterfaced side of the collar, right sides together, and it should stop, can you kind of see there? Um, the collar should stop right where that starts to curve down. And just make sure, I like to take my um, pieces and fold them in half and make sure that I'm stopped sewing um, at the same place on both if there's no notches and there's no notches on this one. So now I'm just gonna go and I'm going to sew just from basically one end of the collar to the other at a quarter of an inch seam allowance because I wanna be within, the seam allowance is half inch, so I just wanna be within the seam allowance. And it really doesn't matter which one you have up on this one because they're both interface, so. <laughs> so basically, when that folds down, that's the under collar here, and then that's the part of the collar stand that will wrap around um, underneath. All right, but before we press anything, we're gonna sew the inside of the collar stand. And 
basically it's just going to sandwich right side with the interfaced side of the collar. So basically it's an interfaced side to interface side on both of them. But we're basically just sandwiching the collar in between these two collar stand pieces. Okay, but this time we're gonna start sewing right here at the bottom and then sew up all the way around this neck edge. Do, 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 do. And then when we get here, we're gonna sew all the way back down um, to the bottom right here. And I want this new one down because it's not interfaced. All right, so now we have a little sandwich. We have collar stand, collar, other part of collar stand. <laughs> So now I'm going to go and I'm going to clip um, these seam allowances. I'm going to cut right here at the side down to a quarter and I'm going to cut the top down to a quarter. But here at the two corners, instead of clipping into those corners, I just trim it down to like an eighth of an inch, really close right there. And then we're going to turn everything right side out and give it a good press. Okay, so now your collar should look like this. So we have the collar stand on both sides. I've got some straight threads. <laughs> All right, now we're going to attach it to the shirt. So beforehand, your shirt should be completely, um, like your shoulder seams should be done. I have my side seams are still open because I haven't put my sleeves in yet. So I've got my yoke finished off and my fronts and backs are attached at the shoulder. And I also have stay stitched um, my neck edge just to keep it from stretching out. And I've also, when I stay stitched, um, I stay stitched the two yoke pieces together so I don't have any worry of anything slipping when I'm sewing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew the interfaced side of the collar stand to the shirt. And I've got notches here, I think. She was not overly generous with the notches. But basically, basically, this should match up exactly. So you have the folded out of the edge of the placket, and since we've already sewn this side, this should actually line up perfectly. And when you sew this down, let me pin it so you can see better. All right, when you sew this down, you wanna take your little seam allowance, so I've kinda of pulled this away, and this does get a little fiddly, but you wanna pull your seam allowance out of the way and try and start right there at that line of stitching or as close to it as possible. But don't sew onto your seam allowance because that's gonna make it all funky when you go to flip it. So it's better to be not quite to the stitching line as opposed to past the stitching line there at the seam allowance. But you're just gonna sew the interfaced an, um, collar stand to your shirt and go slow because you got a lot of curves with the shirt um, that have to be sewn into a, a relatively straight collar stand. Um, so again, this part of the, this collar stand facing, we'll call it, just pull it out of the way. We're not using it right now. So we're just sewing the shirt to the interfaced collar stand. And again, go slow, match any notches that you have. Um, again, this shirt does not, not overly generous with the notches, so I'm gonna be matching up a center point and then my edges and then just kind of pinning. Um, I actually do pin this as I go. You just wanna be careful you don't pinch any of the shirt because um, again, it's, a, it's heavier curves. And I will sew with the shirt against the feed dogs and then the interfaced um, color stand up.
Now you're gonna go to your ironing board and press this seam up into the collar stand. And then I'm gonna get real close to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, getting up real up close and personal here. So this is the inside of your shirt. We've sewn our collar stand, the interface collar stand to the shirt and that is the facing that is still raw and flapping in the wind. So we're going to do this burrito method style and this is how this works. I wanna show you up close because it can get very confusing. All right, so we want this all up. So this is the shirt right here and there's the collar stand and stuff on the back. And what we're gonna do, let me show you this way. Okay, so there's my color stand. Is very carefully, and this gets very fiddly, and you only have to sew a little bit, but we're going to take, this is the um, an interface color stand, and we're going to wrap it around so that it is, your collar's gonna get real wonky in here, and it's not gonna want to, and you're gonna stuff that color in there. but you're gonna do that. So our collar stand pieces right now are right sides together. And again, we don't have to sew far like this, because you really wanna try and not get any of the collar or um, the placket caught in that stitch line. But really, sorry, going out of, the frame there. Really, we just want to sew from our previous, focus, there we go, from our previous, well, is that in focus? There we go. From our previous seam allowance here where we sewed our two collar stands together, um, half of an inch, and we're only going to sew like, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch, if you can make it an inch, great, um, but we just want to sew a little bit into that seam. And we're going to do that on both sides and I'll come right back. All right, so I have it stitched, and I also wanna say, I always stitch with this side up so that I can follow my previous stitch line. Um, that way you don't have any stitch lines showing on the right side. But again, we literally have right side of collar stand facing um, together with the right side of the collar stand, um, the interface piece, and then the placket and the collar are all wedged in under here. So I like to just quickly check and make sure that the collar or the collar stand are not, um, and it's gonna be super bulky and that's okay. So yes, everything is sewn as it should be there. So now I'm gonna go back in. Easier said than done. Okay, back in. And I'm going to clip that tip off. And then I like to clip the really thick, I like to pull back this interface piece and I like to clip um, the placket because that's usually interface two. Kind of clip that at a little bit of an angle. Be careful that you aren't clipping something you don't want to accidentally clip. I have kind of thick interfacing on here though. So you want that point somewhat light. So yeah, I've clipped stuff that I can take out and you literally just take the placket and the collar and kind of pull them apart. And there you go. It's like perfectly sewn and it's already, um, just here at this tip, it's been sewn down. So now your next step is you're just going to, sorry, this is falling out, is fold up this collar stand facing all the way around Again, you can press up your, your seam allowance should be, um, the shirt seam allowance should be pressed up into the shirt. But now we're just going to fold under. And I like to put little glass headed pins in as I'm going around. And I do this on a ham when I'm pinning just because it, it creates more of a curve, uh, makes it a little easier. So I'm going to put pins in and I'm gonna give it a good press and then we're gonna top stitch. Okay, so now I have the inside of my collar stand all pinned down and I have, um, so this is the part that'll go, you know, the shirt will close like this. Um, sorry. Okay. So I have it all pinned down and all pressed. So there's a few things you can do, uh, ways you can finish this off. 
If you are a perfectionist, you can definitely just slip stitch this closed by hand. That's fine. That is a very nice finish. Um, you could also baste this closed for, um, and then go back and do your top stitching. Or you can throw caution to the winds like I do. And I just top stitch it with this side up. Um, and if it gets a little wonky on the other side of the collar stand, it usually happens somewhere back in this vicinity and it's under my collar and I don't really care. So <laughs> it's up to you, whatever your level um, or whatever your preference of perfection is. Also, I'm really having a hard time seeing my top stitching on this fabric anyway, so I'm not real concerned about it. So I'm going to top stitch um, and if you are going to top stitch, even if you're going to baste first before you top stitch, I recommend top stitching around the entire collar stand. So not just along the bottom, but around the, the entire collar stand. Um, and then I'll be back. Okay, so my top stitching's not too bad on the other side. Figures, oh, it got wonky in a couple places. But again, it's underneath my shirt, uh, or my collar, and so I don't really care. So that's the inside of my shirt. There's the outside of my shirt. And now I'm gonna show you how I steam this into submission. Um, and then we are, are finished with the collar uh, portion of your button-up shirt. All right, first I want to show you my setup for my shirt because it's kind of hard to see once I have the shirt on it. But I've just taken my ham with the fat side up and I leaned it against, you can lean it against anything. Sometimes I just lean it against my seam roll, but I have my um, Taylor's press point here. So I've just leaned it up against there. So now I'm going to dress, this is going to act as a neck. So I'm basically going to wrap the shirt around as if this were my neck and I will pin it in place and show you what that looks like. So I'm basically, so I've got my fronts, I mean my side steams still aren't done because I don't have my sleeves in yet. Um, but there's the front, and then I've got the back draped over the back, and I've just taken glass head pins, because you don't want to melt, accidentally melt plastic ones, and just pinned the collar here in the back. I don't know if you can see that. There's a pin. Um, just stuck them right there into my ham. And then what I'm going to do is film left-handed. I just take my iron, and just dump on the steam. Oops, don't do that. Try not to touch it with the iron. Just dump on the seam. Fog up your camera lens, sorry. And then I take my hand and trap that steam. Usually I'm doing this two-handed um, to get that to hold. And then I let it sit on the ham like this until it is completely cooled and that will set the memory um, for your collar. And there we have it, a collar with a collar stand. Um, you're ready to put in your sleeves and finish up your shirt. Again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will see you next time.